I come from uh, many, many generations who have been fighting oppression because of colonization. Second anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I want to talk to you about some of those, uh, some of the preamble and some of the articles in the Declaration because they re resonate in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. They make arbitrary decisions on what they will decide is the human rights of Indigenous Peoples or the rights of Canadians. They talk about money being spent, but yet how much billions of dollars did they spend to make a fake lake for the G8-G20 summit? A fake lake. In indigenous cultures, in my culture where the Iroquois Confederacy has upheld the great law of peace for centuries long before any Europeans stepped foot on this part of the world. We incorporate how we not only have to respect for ourselves and respect in our relationships with others, but respect for the environment. How many of you actually know what is in the Indian Act? How many of you actually really have read it and, and know what's in it? It's the most racist form of legislation that exists in the entire planet. It is the most racist. That Aboriginal languages in Canada are the most endangered in the world. In Canada, there's $2 spent per Aboriginal person on re re revitalizing Indigenous languages. There is over $2,000 spent per person in Canada on English and French. Despite a 2008 apology for the residential school, the residential school system, which is an act of genocide, the status quo remains. There has been no proper consultations, which the government is, up, is obliged to legally uphold, according to numerous Supreme Court decisions in Canada, to, get our consul to consult us and to accommodate our concerns, but to also to get our consent. So the only thing that is left at our disposal is barricades. And I've often wanted to write Barricades 101 for people, because I've had a lot of experience in that. And one of the things that I think is really important for people to understand is that that's the only thing and the only time that your government actually comes and sits down and decides that they're going to negotiate with us. And it's not even true negotiations. It's pretend negotiations. We have to go to the Supreme Court of Canada to define what that inherent right is. Do you know how much that costs? The Court Challenges program was cut by this conservative government. I shouldn't say conservative government. It's the government of Canada. It's the government of Canada. We have the Indian Act. We have not had any human rights instruments to complain against the government of Canada. We have to go to the international level. And that's why the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People was so important for Indigenous peoples around the world. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Britain, and USA, Britain kind of abstained. The colonizers voted against it. And because Canada has been the sole country left out to support and endorse the Declaration, they decided that they would endorse a qualified, they would qualified endorsement of the declaration, where in three weeks previous to their announcement for the, for the declaration, they were in Nagoya, Japan at COP10, trying to delete every single mention of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. They are hypocrites. They, the world can continue without human beings on this planet. We cannot live without this planet. We are destroying the planet. As we speak, the tar sands, they should not exist. People should be outraged. People talked about outrage. Be outraged about the tar sands because they are killing the First Nations communities that are living around it. The Lubicon Cree have been fighting for decades for recognition, for dignity, to be able to hunt and fish the, the animals that they depend on for their health and well-being. Nobody has done anything to help the Lubicon except Amnesty International. In my community, an American company, Neocan, wants to mine niobium, which helps steel, by the way, reinforce steel. But they will hit 
levels of uranium, and I have well water. Most of my community has well water. Neocan said they can create some water systems to help us with the contaminated water of uranium. And I can tell you that no amount of money, no freaking municipal system is going to compensate me for the lack of quality of life I will receive if Neocan goes through. We have united, the Mohawks from Ganesadaga have united with the local farmers union to say no to Neocan. You know, you don't need people who say, well, if I, I vote for this, I might not get elected. Who cares? What is justice? What does justice mean in Canada? More Canadians need to find out what Indigenous people, not just here in Canada, are experiencing, but throughout this world. We know about you. We know all about you. We speak your language. You need to find out about us because those barricades will keep going up. And I was labeled a terrorist, and I probably still am labeled a terrorist for what happened in, during the Oka crisis. Nobody should be labeled a terrorist except the governments and the leaders who are cowards, who do not promote human rights, who do not promote justice, and who do not care about the environment on which we live in. You have to claim back your democracy in Canada. You claim it back. It's not up to us.